Hi everyone, welcome back. It wouldn't be probability if we didn't talk about random variables, and that's what we're going to get into now, discrete random variables. Now if you want a question to ponder as you're learning this material, as always, I've put up a question which you can think about over the course of the lecture, and in fact, we won't come back to this question until the end of lecture 10. So you've got a couple of lectures that you can think about it over. So let's get into what a random variable is. If we start with a sample space s, then what a random variable is, is it's just a function that takes outcomes from s and assigns a value to them. In this case it's a real number. So it's a function that takes elements from our sample space and assigns a real number to them. So let's have a look at a few examples just to get a feel for what random variables are. So in this first example, S is the set of all binary sequences of size 4. The function that counts the number of ones is a random variable because what it's doing is for any element in our sample space, any sequence of length 4, it just returns a numerical value, the number of ones in this case. So what would an example look like? Well, if our sequence was, let's say, 0, 1, 1, 0, then what our random variable is, it's just going to return the number of 1s. In this case, it'll return the value of 2. As another example, if our sequence is 1, 0, 1, 1, then our random variable is going to return the number of 1s. In this case, it returns the value of 3. And we can do this for every one of the 2 to the 4, or 16, binary sequences of length 4, the random variable will return some number, namely the number of 1s in that sequence. Let's have a look at the next example. Suppose s is the set of all rolls of two dice. The function that adds the values of the two dice, that's a random variable. So for example, if we roll our two dice, maybe our first die roll ends up being you know, a 1 in this case, and then our second roll of the dice returns the value, let's say, 3. Then what our random variable does is it returns the sum. So 1 plus 3 or 4 in this case. And this, again, is a function on any value in the sample space, any roll of two dies this function returns a numerical value, the sum of the rolls of those two die. How about another example? Suppose we throw m distinguishable balls into n distinguishable bins randomly. Let x be the number of empty bins. So in this case, x just counts the number of empty bins for each element in the sample space, so x is a random variable. So what we mean by distinguishable balls and distinguishable bins, you can think of that as just they're numbered. So the, all the balls are different from each other, all the bins are different from each other. So what would that look like as an example? Well, let's just consider a particular concrete example. Suppose we had m equals 5. So 5 balls. You know, here's our 5 balls. There's a ball 1, ball 2, ball 3, ball 4, and ball 5. And let's say we have, I don't know, let's say four bins. So what we've got is that we've got a bin 1, a bin 2, a bin 3, and a bin 4. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these balls and we're going to throw them in the bins. So maybe bin 1 gets balls 3 and 5. Maybe bin 2 doesn't get any balls, but maybe bin 3 also doesn't get any balls, but bin 4 ends up getting balls 1, 2, and 4. Then what our random variable returns in this case, so for that element in our sample space, what it returns is the number of empty bins. In this case there are two empty bins, so it returns a value of 2. So again, 
Uh, what a random variable is, it's just a function that assigns to every element in your sample space some numerical value. Something quantifying what you are interested in. In this case, we are interested in the number of empty bins. So that's what our random variable is going to capture for each element of our sample space. Now for a random variable, because it's a function, we can talk about its range. The range is just the set of all values it takes on. And so if we go back to our previous examples, what is our range of our random variable x? So again, we use r for range, and I'll just indicate it here. That means range. What is the range of this random variable? Well, this is just counting the number of ones in a sequence of length 4. So there could be 0 ones, 1, 2, 3, or 4 ones. How about the sum of two die roll? Well, the sums we can get are, the minimum sum we can get is 2, that's if a 1 is rolled on each die, all the way up to a maximum sum of 12, which is when 6s are rolled. So we get all the values up to, from 2 up to 12. How about for this random variable? What is the range of x in this case? Well, if you think about the case when m is 5 and n is 4, you know, what's the smallest number of empty bins I can have? Well, I could have zero empty bins. I've got five balls, four bins. I could make sure each bin has one ball in it, and then I've got one ball to spare that I could throw in any other bin. So the minimum value would be zero. I could have zero empty bins. What's the maximum number of empty bins I could have? Well, I could put all the balls into one bin, and then I have n minus 1 bins that are empty. So the maximum number would be n minus 1. But that's assuming that I had more balls than bins. In other words, I had the ability of making sure there was no empty bins because I had enough balls to distribute among all the, amongst all the bins. However, that might not be the case. What happens if m is less than n, if I have fewer balls? Well, again, if we look at our example above, suppose I had only two balls. Then what is the minimum number of empty bins? Well, I can't have one empty bin, because that means three of them are full, but I would only have two balls to fill three bins, which is impossible. But I could have, in the case of two balls, I could have two empty bins. And so in this case, the minimum number is going to be the number of bins minus the number of balls. That's imagining I throw one ball in each bin, and then what's left over is the empty ones, and there are n minus m of those. Or the maximum number is I could throw all the balls in one bin, and I get n minus 1 empty bins. So in this case, our range depends on the relationship between m and n. Okay, so there's some examples of random variables and the ranges of random variables. Now your question might be, why do we even consider random variables? What's the benefit of them? Well, over the next couple of lectures, lecture 9 and lecture 10, you'll see the benefit of random variables. But at the very start here, the benefit is really that we can describe events in a new way. So we can use random variables to describe events. And so the main idea is we have been looking at, over this section on probability, we have been looking at finding the probability of certain events occurring. So events are our main object that we are considering. We've got our sample space. What's the probability that if we pick something from that sample space, it is a member of a particular event? So how could I describe an event? Well, for example, in this case with strings of size 4, a particular event, so maybe I'll say e.g. So for example, a particular event could be the set of all strings with exactly two ones. So a set of all strings with exactly two ones. And that's an event that we could perhaps be interested in. Now I can describe this event using the random variable in the following way. It's the 
set of all elements of our sample space such that the value of that element under the random variable is 2. And so there we go. We've managed to describe an event using our random variable. We are interested in all those elements of our sample space with value of 2 for the random variable. And that's just another way of saying with exactly two ones. The probability of event A, we've normally denoted it by PR of A. But now we could write it as this in terms of the random variable. So I don't have to reference the bottom line here is I don't have to reference the event by its name A. I can reference the event by how it's built from our random variable. The event A is really all of those things that have output of 2 under the random variable. So we can write its probability as PR of x equals 2. What's the probability that when you select something at random, the value of the random variable on it has value 2? So that's our new notation we're going to use to describe the probability of events now that we're describing events using random variables. So as another example here, we could say, suppose we are interested in the event A, which is the sum is 7. So I'm being very short, short here with my description, but the event A is the set of all rolls of dies where you get a sum of 7. In terms of our random variable, this is more appropriately described as the set of all elements in our sample space such that x of s equals 7. And so we may in be interested in, if I roll two die, what's the probability that I get a sum of 7? That's really just asking for the probability that the random variable takes on the value 7. And again, for this uh, example with the balls in the bins, so random variables, again, allow us to describe events more appropriately, uh, more succinctly. So for example, suppose we are interested in the event A, uh, where there are two empty bins. For example, the question could be, if I randomly throw m balls into n bins, what's the probability that exactly two bins are empty? So that we would be interested in the probability of event A. In this case, the event A would be described as the set of all elements in our sample space for which the value of the random variable is 2. And so we would say the probability of A we would describe it more appropriately in terms of the random variable as the probability of the value of the random variable being 2. Now the nice thing about using random variables is we can use more than one random variable on a particular sample space. So this random variable counted the number of empty bins. I may also be interested in um, how many bins have exactly one ball in them. So I could define a new random variable y, which is the number of bins with exactly one ball. And I could study both random variables on the same sample space because both of them are capturing different information about the elements of the sample space. So that's the benefit of using random variables is we can describe events, but we can describe them a lot more appropriately in terms of the information we're after. So we've already mentioned probability in terms of describing the probability of an event. Uh, in terms of the probability of the random variable, but here is the formal definition. So if s is a sample space and x is a random variable on the sample space s, and little x is a value in the range of big X, then the probability of little x occurring is denoted by the probability of big X equals little x, and that's just the sum of the probabilities of all the outcomes in s that have value little x. In other words, this is really just saying it's the probability of the event A where A is just the set of all elements in your sample space that have value little x. 
So that's all it's saying. It's just a shorthand for the probability of this event. So let's have a look at an example. We will continue with example 310, where we're looking at binary strings of four bits. And our random variable is just counting the number of ones in those strings. We've already seen that our range is 0 through 4. What's the probability that the random variable is equal to 0? So again, if we think about in terms of what I've written up above, we are really interested in the probability of the event where the elements of the event have zero ones. So if I just quickly sketch down what is that event? Well, these are all the strings that have zero ones. Oh, there's only one string of length four with zero ones. So what's the probability that occurs? Well, that's the size of the event, which is one in this case, over the size of the sample space. What is the size of our sample space? Well, these were the strings of four bits, so they are of size 2, or it is of size 2 to the 4, or 16. So there are 16 possible strings, and there's only one of them that has zero ones. So the probability is 1 over 16. How about the probability of the random variable equaling 1? Well, that's going to be the size of the event space, so all of the possible outcomes that have 1, 1 in them. So all the elements in the sample space that have 1, 1. So those are going to be 1, 0, 0, 0, or 0, 1, 0, 0, or 0, 0, 1, 0, or 0, 0, 0, 1. In other words, there were four possible locations, and we wanted to pick one of them to put a 1 in. And so there are four of those. So that is 4 over 16. How about the probability that we have exactly two ones? Well, those are going to be things like 1, 1, 0, 0, or 1, 0, 1, 0, or 1, 0, 0, 1, or 0, 1, 1, 0, or 0, 1, 0, 1, or 0, 0, 1, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of them. Did I list them all? Well, we know another way to count these rather than listing. We know that of the four locations, we're trying to pick two of them to put a one in. What's four choose two? That would be four times three divided by two, or in other words, six. So we did get them all there. How about exactly three ones? Well, we could have one, 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 zero, or one, one, zero, one or 1, 0, 1, 1, or 0, 1, 1, 1. How many are there? Of the four locations, we're trying to pick three of them. For the ones, there are four choose three, which is equal to four. So again, I'm indicating here that we could get them by enumeration, by actually listing, or we can use our counting techniques to figure out what they are without actually having to list them. How about getting four ones. Well, there's only one possible string, and so the probability of selecting it is 1 over 16. So what we have here is we've listed, in this case, our range of x, and we've worked out the probability of each element of the range actually occurring. The probability that 0 occurs, or 1 occurs, etc., all the way down. Moreover, what we found is that, in general, the probability that x is equal to k, for a k in the range, either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, if we look at what we did, not so much listing now, but in terms of our counts, we worked that out as it's 4 choose k, so of the four spots, pick k of them that are going to contain the ones, and then we divide it by 2 to the, in this case, n was 4, so 2 to the 4. And so that's our general result for the probability. We've done it there for each case, but 
In future examples, we are going to be more interested in not so much doing the case-by-case -case analysis, but getting some sort of general result. The probability of x equals k equals 4 choose k over 2 to the 4. All right, let's have a look at the next topic. So this is expected value. So the expected value of a random variable. This is really just saying, you know, I've got this random variable. Let's again look at back at this example. Random variable x, it takes on value 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. If I was to pick some element of my sample space at random and work out the value of the random variable at it, so what is x of s for this arbitrary selected s, what value do I expect to get as the value of my random variable? And you might be able to see from our list here is that if I pick something at random, it's most likely going to be one of these ones because there's just more of these than all the other ones. So I'm probably going to expect the value of my random variable to be 2 just because there are more ways to get it than there are the other values of the random variable. Now this is really what we are trying to capture here with this idea of expected value. The expected value of the random variable, the value you expect to get out, if you pick something at random from your sample space and work out the value of your random variable at it, what value do you expect to get? Well, it's defined to be the sum of the product of the value of the random variable times the probability that you get that value of the random variable. So that's what the expected value is. It's the sum over all of the range values times the probabilities of those range values. So the thing to notice is what we are summing over. In this case we are summing over the sample space and we are taking the product of the value of the random variable of that element of the sample space times the probability that element occurs. Whereas in the first sum we were summing over the range values of the random variable and we were taking the product of the value of the random variable times the probability that that value uh, comes out. These are just two different ways to look at the same sum. Where they're just grouped, terms are just grouped together differently. And so that's the expected value. Let's work out what it is for our particular example. We're going to revisit example 310 again. And this is the 4-bit binary strings. We have worked out the probabilities. In that, on that previous page. I've just put them into a table now. And so what is the, our expected value? It's the sum of, and it's just the product of these things. It's the product of this and this added to the product of this with this, plus the product of this and this, and so on down the line. So this is going to be 0 times 1 over 16, plus 1 times 4 over 16, plus 2, times 6 over 16, plus 3, times 4 over 16, plus 4, times 1 over 16. And so all of these have that common denominator of 16. The numerator in this case is 4, plus 12, plus 12, plus 4. So that's 24, 28, 32 over 16, or 2. And so our expected value of our random variable is 2. And you can see that that is what we observed by looking at the fact that most of the elements of our sample space end up returning the value of 2. And so we did expect to get a value of 2 just from looking at it from that perspective. But now we've defined what an expected value is, and we've actually calculated it, and we see that agrees with our intuition. So that's what expected value is. And we'll just write it down here. What this means, so we've said this a couple of times already, but it's good to put it in writing. This means that for a randomly selected binary string, of length 4, we expect 
to get two ones. That's what we expect. We expect that if we select a string at random, that it'll have exactly two ones. Now a couple of bits of terminology before we move on. And the bits of terminology are this table here, which consisted of the range of our random variable in the top, and then the probabilities for each value in the range of our random variable. This is known as the probability distribution. So this is a probability distribution for that random variable x. What we're going to do is finish up this lecture with two examples of quite common probability distributions. So this is an example of one. This is actually an example of what we call a binomial distribution. We're going to see it a little bit more generally in our, not our next example, but the one after the last example we do. We'll also see, which is our next example, an example of a geometric distribution. And these are two very common probability distributions for a random variable. And they're quite important, so that's why I want to cover them specifically.